What does it mean, Terry? It means that there's a, a salmon on the end of your line. <laughs> I love that noise. Can you hear it? It's just... The salmon are on the line. We're going to talk about Whispering Bells was the name of his boat. And this is one of his bells. I think it's kind of neat. I'm going to tell you a story about an old man and when he finished fishing after he, after 60 years, he, re, he says, Terry, I'm going to retire. I said, what are you going to do, put new tires on your car? He said, no, I'm going to retire from fishing. So here is his story. It seems to be that every old wooden fish boat has a story to be told. Here is one. I can remember an old Gulf Trawler fishing boat, a, tip, a typical wooden double-ender that tied up on a float just down here. He's called the boat Whispering Bells. Ring the bell. <laughs> That's his bell. He loved that noise. And uh, the skipper and his dog loved the noise too because he, 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 mean, he used to go out with uh, this old man fishing and he wanted to hear the bells ringing and the salmon coming on board the boat. So the skipper and his dog on the whispering bells, and I love that name. The always laughing old skipper of the, of the whispering bells. Just for fun, he loved to rock his boat and hear the metal trolling pole bells ring. His dog loved to ring the old bells. It also went belting. He, the dog went belting back and forth along the boat's narrow side decks, not missing, steering over the stern and wagging his tail every trip. He heard the bells. The bells meant a salmon on the line. I found the old man with his dog on his lap one storm, stormy day, just down here. He was just sitting at the bottom of, the, of his old float ramp, listening to all the troller bells ringing. Ring the bell. It must have been orchestra music to his ears. He walked along the little wharf to his, to his boat, the whispering bells, and, and put up in the window for a sail. And, the, and uh, he looked up at the ramp, and uh, he said to me, Come tomorrow, because I'm going to, this is my last time I'm coming down to the river. So I came, I came down the next day and looked at his boat, and it has, in, in his wheelhouse window, for sale. Ring the, it was his last bell. You're ringing his bell for the last time. Thank you, Whispering Bell. <laughs> Great story. This is a fish pew, and it's used off a collector. And he comes alongside your boat, and he pitches the fish out of the fish hatch with the pew by stabbing him in the tail or in the eyeball. Well, uh, you gotta have a fish pew. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. I, I'm using it for a walking stick. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? BC Packers cannery flag. 2012, we had the Dunbar Library open every day. And uh, I thought to myself, the kids want, the kids of the Dunbar Library, they want to know something about salmon, they want to know something about rivers. So I think I'll, I think I'll, can't contact my Bill Staines, he lived, he lived in Richmond. He used to write stories about salmon and places where they go. So here's a song by River Bill Staines. And uh, it goes like this. I was born in the path of the winter wind, and raised where the mountains are old. The springtime waters came dancing down, I remember the tales they told. The whistling waves of my younger days too, too quickly have faded on by, and, and all of my memories linger on like the light in a faded sky. River, take me along in your sunshine, sing me your song, ever moving, ever moving, ever winding, ever free. You rolling old river, you change, you're, you changing old river. Let you and me, river, run down to the sea. Well, I've been to the city and, and back again. I've been moved by some things that I've learned. I met some fine people and called them friends. I felt the change when the season turned. I've heard the songs that the children sing and listened to, to love's melody. I felt my own music within me rise like a wind in an autumn tree. Someday when the flowers are still blooming, someday when the grass is still green, my rolling waters will round the bend and flow into the open sea. So here's the rainbow that followed me here, and here's to the friends that I know. Here's to the song that I'm within me now. I'll sing it wherever I go. Embarrassing photos. <laughs> <laughs> What's that?
They're kids' forts. They're, in the old days, when, when I was a child, uh, eight, nine, and ten years old, you know, the, we used to build forts along the river so we could protect the river. You know, this is a river fort, a kids' river fort. <laughs> and there's six of them now. One, two, and there's a whole bunch more along the river. People say, knock them down. No, 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 no. The kids used to build these for hundreds of years. Well, we're living down here in, in, in Southwoods. Some kid has, has gone through the, one of the history books and saw the, these little forts along the river and said, let's just make a few of them. Kind of nice. What I like to see is the, the little niches he finds along the rocks. Carex limbia. If you, you, know, if you had this over here, but you see where they walk, if you dump mud in there, you'd have a, a, a huge marsh all the way along here. It's, it's trying to reestablish now, but we can help it along. We can help it along. Look at the, the Samson there. She's right on the river. It's game over. This was a, you know, a little bit of habitat for the what, what they took out of the slough and they did this here. And uh, the salmon got church church changed. So be it. Very nice. <laughs> This stone here was put here at the turn of the century. The city of Vancouver did a, a, a project called V2K, looking at you know at stories of Vancouver, you know at the turn of the of the last century. So this was chosen as one of the best ones, and so they got a big rock here and they carved the story into the rock, and uh, the story about you know what this place used to look like when it was a booming ground. When, when they dragged logs down here from Dunbar and so all the way down from uh, right about, about where the strong store is and dragged them down to the river here and dumped them in for the mill and uh, they call it the booming ground so uh, I, I wrote a little story about it I thought it was important not to for, not, not to forget it and we didn't forget it because the story now I'm going to tell you is in a little capsule that's buried at the city hall and when this when this actual you know century comes to an end and we go for 2021 they're going to dig it up and they're going to going to read this story and it's going to be neat the rock is probably around uh, 20 or 30 million years old so we had to get an old one because this is an old place <laughs> so uh, here we go people always asked where the heck is the booming grounds and what did you do there in those days not in the 1950s it, and it was all, all, all very hard for me to explain because people didn't understand that we lived in floating floating houses and uh, right here on the Fraser River. The families who lived and worked worked here were called squatters. And uh, it was nice to live here, So, but we used to walk up the hill. We always walked down the hill or walked up the hill. So to go to school, we walked up the hill, and after school, we walked down the hill. This is the story on the stone. Our, our school classmates thought our place was some kind of a secret ammunition firing range or a bomb testing site. On weekends, our school friends sometimes came to visit and watched in amazement as we rolled logs into the river, threw pipe poles, and ran along, and ran along catwalks all along the river here. And the, the river kids were expected to dog up the stray logs. Some of these logs washed away, and we'd go out in little rowboats, like in the back of my truck, and we would capture these lo logs and sell them it was our it was our, our money <laughs> we made, made a living my dad says get there and, and dog some logs up we need some money <laughs> and we had to have them have that milkman come down here he didn't like coming down Blenheim Street there was about four or five houses in the 1950s and 60s you know on, right on Blenheim Street but he didn't like coming down here because it was a long way of his route. But he told me it was his longest milk route was right here on the river. I thought that was kind of neat. And when I, when I did the stone, I thought, the city said, well, make a comment for the very end. When we dig up the, you know, the, the story and we tell it again. And I thought to myself, I had a great childhood here. You know, I was a child. Then I became a teenager, then I became, I went to McGee High School, and then I went Point Grey, and then McGee, and uh, I thought to myself, 
hey, I had a great childhood. Could I turn, could I, could I turn back the clock and kind of do it all over again? Because I'm an old dude now, you know. <laughs> Thank you. That's my story of the story stone. Hey, ooh. <laughs>